All right, Sega Violins, this is your discussion video for Queen of Sheba. Um, there's a bit to talk about in this one. I ended up filling two sides of my little sheet here. Um, first of all, conserve your bow on the dotted half notes here at the beginning. Because um, I, I want you to really bring the eighth notes out uh, and right now you use your entire bow on the dotted half and I like I'm just I'm not hearing much of what you're doing um, and you were the only ones playing these long notes everybody else has quarter notes and so this is kind of a, a lyrical melodic little like secondary melody here um, so use a compact bow, meaning that you engage the string and, and you kind of use a slow bow, but with enough pressure that it sounds loud, but not so much that it scratches. Just keeping it all kind of in the lower half of the bow so that we can really hear what you're doing. Um, I think there's there's only two of you, right? And you're up against three first violins, two third violins that are playing the same part as the other two violas. So that's already four, five, six, seven people that are playing stuff that is completely different from what you're playing. And the cellos and basses are also honking away on quarter notes. Um, so I really want you to bring this part out and be proud that you're doing something that nobody else is doing. Um, Make sure that you lock in with the first violins on the eighth notes at the end of these bars here at the beginning because you know that the first violins are just playing straight eighth notes this whole time. So make sure that you, you're you listening to them and that you don't just play your eighth notes whenever. I think I've almost been able to hear that even though I can't really hear your part at all. <laughs> you're not playing it loud enough. Um, make sure that you're locking for and in with the first violins every time. Um, overall, watch out for F sharps and C naturals. F sharps need to be higher and C naturals need to be lower. Use fourth finger when marked. Um, also, I have a fourth finger rule that if the note lasts longer than two quarter note beats, if it's two quarter notes in a row, three quarter notes in a row, a half note, a whole note tied to a whole note. Um, if it's anything longer than two beats, use your fourth finger on it, especially if it is an E string pitch. So measure three, do not play open E, do not do it. It's gross, especially on something <laughs> on a long note like that. We don't want you just wailing away on this tiny piece of like metal dental floss. Um, so as a visual representation of these high two, uh, low two thing, F sharps need to be up here beside your third finger. C naturals need to be back here by your first finger. Um, there's a lot of space in between. This is no man's land. If your finger lands in here, it is wrong. It is either a low two or a high two. So. Um, hopefully that was visible. It's hard for me to see when <laughs> I'm holding a violin like this and it's not my natural playing position. It's, but hopefully the tapes are more helpful than me doing it here on <laughs> something that has no visual points of reference at all. Um, onwards, measure 34. Oh, hello, we're into the solos. Um, that's because the first half is going pretty well. Um, but yeah, use your fourth finger whenever marked because it. I do agree with the fourth finger markings um, in this piece. So use it, do it, follow it. Measure 34, this solo is going well. Um, just trust that you're gonna be given a cue and you know when to come in. You can count to four, it's fine. Um, be careful of the finger placement, the difference between 
C natural and F sharp. That is something that goes for all of the soloists. Um, first violin and second violin soloists. In every single solo, there's that that switch between F sharp and C natural. Um, and everyone is really struggling with C natural especially. So make sure that you are locking that in because if you play, if any either person uh, in the duet plays like a, a kind of a wonky second finger somewhere in no man's land, the harmony is destroyed. Uh, so make sure that you guys are being really accurate with your finger placement. Um, I'm not really going to talk about the 2Ds much, at least in the, the beginning here, because they're fine. Um, soloist at measure 43, higher F sharps, lower C naturals. Again, this is just going to be like a running theme with these solos, um, that, that the second finger, the other, the other notes are pretty well in tune as any second finger note. Um, it is really wonkily out of tune because it's just kind of hitting in no man's land and it's not being accurately placed either next to the third finger or the first finger. Um, crescendo a little bit through measure 50. Uh, help bring the orchestra back in in measure 51. It's just kind of a cool little thing um, to, to help smooth over the the difference, um, the, like the sound level difference between two violins and an entire orchestra. Um, so crescendo a little bit into measure 51. Um, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of talking about these solos. All of them need to be louder. <laughs> um, actually, the you guys as uh, second violins are doing pretty well at balancing uh, and being louder, um, but think think of it like um when <clears throat> when you turn the lights off and like say that you're reading a book and your mom or your brother or something just comes in and like shuts your lights lights off turns your lamp off um and it takes you a second to adjust to the light difference like your eyeballs are like what is going on um that's kind of what our ears do when the full orchestra is playing and then it just drops to two violins. So when that happens, we really want the soloists to be much louder so that you cut through the sound that's carrying in the hall because the, the orchestra sound is big and it's beautiful and it's going to resonate through the concert hall. And if you guys are going, like, that's sounding all wimpy and mousy and <laughs> scared and sad. Um, so think of, think of you guys, you're like trumpets. This is the, the entrance for a queen. So act like trumpets here, um, not like scared little high school violinists. <laughs> um, measure 53 and 54, C sharps. Your best friend high two on both strings is back. Um, so make sure you're playing C sharps here. Handel has actually kind of sneakily changed the key here from like 50 to 81. You'll notice that all C's are C sharp, literally every single one of them, I think, um, between measure 50, at least 53. Um, yeah, uh, definitely between 53 and 81, all C's are sharp. Handel is pretending to be in D major here. So if any C sharps are missed, this, um, this pretending to be in a different key, is this facade is also destroyed because now we've hit C natural and we're like, are we in D major or G major? What are we doing? So be really careful. Um, you guys have the hard thing, the hard part about having to play two different C sharps. Um, you've got your high C sharp on the A string and then you've got your low C sharp over here on the G string. Uh, I think third violins and violas might have this. First violins like never play on their G string. They never play that low. Um, 
So make sure that whenever you have to play a low C sharp, it's way up here. It would be close to your fourth finger. Um, this pops up later in the 2D at, at, in the 70s, but I will talk about that when I get there. First of all, solo at 55. The solo has two, C two C sharps, so make sure they are correct. Um, you'll see you've got a low C sharp in 57 and a high C sharp in 59. So mental note, mark it in your part, do whatever you need to do. Um, then you've got the, the high second finger in the 2D in measure 62 and 64. So make sure those are high enough. They're all the way up there by your third finger. Measure 69. The solo here needs to be long and flowing and connected. Uh, what I'm hearing right now is, um, is a lot of separation between the notes. If Carney has told you to Baroque music has separation between all the notes. You're like doing a really great job at Like you're adding like too much space now you've taken it too far uh, And in fact, this is a much more flowing section. So I would like everything to be connected here It's not so segmented and choppy as everything was before. So make sure that it is very connected. Uh, first violinist should also be very connected. I gave them the same lecture in their video. Uh, and also be careful about all the C sharps because we are pretending to be in D major. Uh, 2D at 74. Um, this is the low C sharp that's got your fourth finger right next to it. Check out this crazy fingering. In 74, it wants high three, four, high three, open. The reason that they want you to play it with a four and an open is so you can, you don't have to cross strings twice. Cause that's cumbersome and it sounds kind of gross. So you use your fourth finger here. Or, then you stay on one string, you cross for the open string because you're going to be playing the next two beats on the D string. So that's why that fingering is there. I'd really like for you to follow it. Um, if you don't follow it, I'm going to call you out for trying to fly away because you're going to be doing this the whole time. You're going to be flapping your arm like a chicken. So don't be a chicken be a nice, classy musician, Baroque musician. You're not trumpets here, really. Um, you're probably back to being actually violinists here. Measure 81. This is a trumpety solo again. Um, this one, I wrote, this one is fine. Just lock in and be exactly with the violin one soloist. I think you guys are actually together here rhythmically. Um, this is pretty similar to the the very first solo at 34, um, kind of. It's exactly the same in the first violin part. Um, it's a little different here. Just be careful. We are back to having C naturals and F sharps. So make sure that um, the fourth note of measure 81 is a nice low C natural. Uh, measure 89, another long, flowy, connected solo. I don't know if the same person is playing the both of the long, flowy, connected solos. Um, if you are not, then hello, other soloist. Play long, flowy, and connected, just like I talked about a couple minutes ago. Um, I've got a fingering suggestion for measure 92 because this is a gross bar. Um, so you're going to start out in regular first position, two, three, two, one. You've got E twice in a row. That's second E. Play it with your second finger. Go 
This is the second half of measure 92. Two, three, two, one. First finger is D sharp, and then slide it back up for E natural. One, two, three, use a fourth finger for this A, so you don't have to cross strings and flap like a chicken. One, two, three, four, two, uh, three, two, one. And then you're good from there on out. So um, just replay <laughs> that part of the video until you pick up the fingering. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, the reason that I'm having you do that fingering or I would like you to do that fingering is to avoid sliding your first finger between um, E natural, D sharp, and E natural all right in a row there at the end of 92 and 93 because that's gross and like slimy sounding. So uh, this is slightly easier to deal with. Um, Crescendo through measure 96 to help lead the orchestra back in. This is another one of those solos that ends with quarter notes, so you can crescendo through it and help lead the orchestra back in. The other solos don't end this way. Um, it's not as easy for them to help lead the orchestra back in. Uh, but this one is another one of those things where you can kind of dovetail the volume difference between the two violins by themselves and all of the orchestra coming back in in measure 97. Be careful of the notes in measures 99 and 100. The D sharps and C sharps are extremely important. Also, the first violins are playing these exact same notes. Uh, so it'd be awesome if everyone actually played all of the exact same notes. So um, measure 99, your first finger on the tape on the E string over here, F sharp. Go ahead and use open E, that's fine. D sharp is a high third finger. C sharp is on the tape. D sharp, C sharp, B natural, A natural, G natural. Make sure your three gets back here because it just played a high three, so make sure it gets on the tape back here, F sharp. This is now measure 100, G, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Um, so use a four here if you can, four, one, three, one, four, one, three, one. Um, this way you only have to cross one string. If you don't do that, you are definitely going to be flying away because you're going to be going uh, so that's kind of hard to try to do three different string crossings, especially if this gets quicker. Um, the reason that D sharps and C sharps have been added here in, um, in the 90s and 100s, the, the end of this piece, is because um, just how, just like Handel was um, pretending to be in D major at the beginning of this section, or kind of at the beginning of this section, He's now pretending to be in E minor. D sharp is the leading tone to E. It's a half step below E. You get that motion in 92 into 93. D sharp E, that half step shift there. Um, the tonality has changed to the minor mode at this point, and we actually cadence in E minor uh, in measure 104, and it kind of sounds all sad and weird and like doom and gloom and oh my god this was supposed to be a happy entrance for a queen and what happened and then you go back to the beginning the the da capo and then it's back in a g major um and it's all happy and cool but that's why it's super important to be playing d sharps and c sharps correctly here at the end because we're completely in a different key and if you play those notes a little wonky, or if, God forbid, if you just play D natural and C natural, um, it's gonna sound really gross because you're gonna be playing the wrong notes against the first violins who are playing the exact same notes in the same octave as you. Um, and it's also not going to sound correct um, tonally. The, the harmonies are gonna be really strange. So um, that's really all I have to talk about for Queen of Sheba. I don't remember when I, I made the viola videos like a week or two ago, I've been so busy. I don't remember if I made a slow practice version of Sheba, but I don't think I did because you guys are playing it 
so well it's so close to performance tempo that I'm I don't think I'll make a slow practice video especially because YouTube has the ability to like slow the video down a little bit anyway if you need to practice it slower so here are the other performance videos definitely go play along with the first violin video um, so you can see how the solos fit together because once you are playing your notes correctly and you play it with me playing the first violin notes correctly you can see what those harmonies are supposed to sound like and you know what you're shooting for when you play it in class hopefully with these videos everybody will get the right notes um, and, and we'll actually correct everything by the time the concert comes up. Uh, we've still got some time, don't be too stressed, but it is pretty close. Um, it's a couple weeks away, so hopefully um, we can get everything whipped into shape by then. Go, you can go play with the violin three and viola videos as well, but definitely go play with the first violin video. Um, that's all I have for Sheba. Um, I will see you in the next video. Happy practicing.